Hey guys, Anthony, 4B4 Diesel. This video, a bit of chit chat, trying to help you decide if you were, if you own a Hilux or a Prado, or you're thinking about owning a Prado or a Hilux, and you're not sure whether you should buy a Hilux or buy a Prado, whether you should sell your Hilux and buy a Prado, or sell your Prado and buy a Hilux. And I'm probably uh, pretty well equipped to give you the right information. These are the vehicles we've worked on for years. These are the vehicles, not only do we drive on road tests from the workshop, but we actually own and use these vehicles extensively also. So currently we've got a 2013 Hilux. The last Hilux I owned was a 2011 Hilux, which was purchased new. This one, uh, obviously secondhand used vehicle. Uh, it's a 2013 Hilux with the four speed auto, okay? So now, I'm going to give you the big differences and sort of the pros and cons if you like. Uh, firstly, just touching on that, the fact that it's a four-speed auto. Look, I'm not saying the four-speed auto is bad, but it's probably, it's not it's not great, okay? I really, you know, you probably already know if you've been watching the videos, the five-speed auto, the A750, is absolutely bulletproof. It works really well, it's smooth, it's reliable. Um, you can even get away with really poor lack of no oil changes and services and they still work really well. Of course they work better and they last longer with uh, clean live blood. There's, that's a speed camera on the other side, isn't it? We need to do a video, we need to stop at one of these speed cameras and explain to you how they get you on coming from the rear. Not uh, condoned speeding or anything, but I just don't like the tactics the way they do it. But that's another video, this one. So. We've got this 2013 Hilux, it's got you know new injectors, the intake's all cleaned out, the BFE's done, we've, uh, we've replaced the drive shaft with a genuine, and of course the seal and while we're at it because it was butchered up, we did the wheel bearing at that side as well. We didn't do the other side because it's just not due yet, the only reason we went in there is because there was a split boot, so it's we'll just do that side, the other side will get done as required or it will get done at maybe 300 and 300 or 350,000 k's. This vehicle, it doesn't travel big distances extensively like our Prados. Our Prados are the touring vehicles. They get out in the outback on the tracks and all this sort of thing. And I'm gonna, I don't know if you can hear the engine noise in this vehicle, but I'm gonna explain to you what's happening right now. We're going up, it was the slightest of hills. It's kind of this four-speed auto. They may as well be re closely related to the six-speed, the A60, whatever it is, in the later Prados and some other vehicles as well, you know, from 2015, the six-speed auto. So we're kind of going to say, I'm not a big fan of the four-speed and the six-speed, okay? Now, the five-speed seems to work best. Um, it could be improved as well. It's all software, the torque converter unlocking in those higher gears under the slightest undulations. And I'd say that the four speed's probably just as bad or worse than the six speed. So right at the moment, we're cruising along flat ground, 110 gauge an hour speed limit. And it pulls about 2,000 revs in fourth gear, fourth, you know, converter lock. You come to, you know, it does some slight hills, okay. I'm remembering it's a Hilux. It's got better aerodynamics, it's lighter. It's only got an alloy train on the back. It's very light, right? Dual cab, minimal mods. It's got an ARB commercial bar there, so there's a little bit of weight there. It's got some Cooper all-terrain all tires. Uh, but other than that, it's a fairly standard vehicle, what we call, you know, the typical work unit. Now, driving the Hilux, awesome once you're out on the open road like this, and a lot of people have got those. I suppose you get used to the roughness, and some people are gonna say, oh, you know, they're not rough, mine's fine, and that sort of thing. But the Prados and the Hiluxes are chalk and cheese when it comes to comfort. When I get back into the, okay, let me compare, just to take a step back, comparing our 2008 120 Prado to our 2019 150 Prado, 11 years of difference, chalk and cheese, partly because of the suspension and because the 150 suspension design is completely different. So you get a more comfortable ride out of the 150s. Uh, so when I got when I got back into the 120 after driving the 150, I would think, wow, you know, it's a bit rough, it's a bit old. You'd feel the oldness of the 120 after driving the 150. Not in a big way, but slightly, you know, you'd go just slightly, uh, you know, you, you could feel it. Now, when 
moment I get out of the Hilux into the 120, I'm going, ho oh, oh, ho, this is beautiful. The difference is about 10 times as strong, if you know what I mean. And uh, basically, yeah, 10 times as strong as in massive difference, if you know what I mean, massive difference. Yeah, we've got a bit of, uh, a bit more road noise and vibration, so I can see the camera's doing weird things, flat flashing back and forward, in and out. Well, so that'll be just an interesting part of the road vibration. Uh, I'm getting distracted here. But got the young fella sitting next to me, he's giving me hand signals. <laughs> Fully distracting. But what I'm trying to describe to you is, oh, truck driver on the phone again? Oh, all the truck drivers are on the phone, mate. Thank you, thanks for that. So he's just pointing out that every truck we drive past, they're on the phone. Okay, so obviously a lot of laws get broken all day, every day. I suppose that's their choice, isn't it? Uh, not good. You're in control of quite a few tons of lethal weapon there, aren't they? Yeah, pretty dangerous. And we, were you with me, Mitch, the other day when we had that truck swerve? He swerved. It was on this highway, actually. He swerved. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do it because everyone will think, "What am I doing?" But literally, if you were next to him, you'd be gone, mate. He swerved from this left lane and took up the right lane. Other than about, he probably had one to two feet left on the uh, on the left side of that solid line on the far right there. So not good, you know. People need to concentrate on their driving, including truck drivers, of course. You know, if you think you can handle talking on the phone and all that sort of thing and texting while you're driving, maybe it's time to think again. Maybe not. Anyway. Hilux, very difficult to park compared to a Prado. So if you've got an everyday vehicle that you need to take to the shops, this sort of thing, you get down the shopping center car park and you can get into a spot with a Prado really easy. Absolutely beautiful, uh, happy days. The Hilux, you know, longer wheelbase. I don't know exactly, but I'm gonna estimate it's probably about four inches longer wheelbase, about 100 mil, something like that, give or take. Someone can put in the comments exactly what it is. I've never measured it, I can't remember the specification. I just know where the tires land in the workshop, that they're a little bit longer, a few inches, I'd say, like I said, about four, about 100 mil, maybe 120, at a really accurate guess, just a guesstimation. So, a little bit more difficult to park, and you know, that sort of thing, out on the tracks, you find yourself doing a lot more three, four or five point turns where the Pratos get around in one hit, the Hilux is often going to back up at least once, and if you didn't prepare yourself right for that, you know, sort of U-turn on the tracks, you know, those switchbacks, you may even be backing up twice on some of these turns, so you've got to be careful of that. The comfort level, now I'm not saying the Hilux is uncomfortable, but being light and with heavy duty suspension, you do feel every bump, you actually absolutely feel it. It's a rough ride compared to the Prado. The two Pratos compared to each other, I would say the difference is like a 10 to 20% thing compared to the difference between the 120 Prado and the Hilux. It's just massive. It's like you jump into the Prado, it's soft, it's smooth, white. It's also a lot quieter, okay? So remember the Prado is a luxury vehicle. It's a lot quieter, okay? A lot quieter. Uh, it's got a lot more poke. The Prado 120, 2008, five years older than this, right? Both engines in good shape. This one's got new injectors, jobs right, happy days. Both got clear intake manifolds and all that. Comparing same, same, both autos. The 120 gets going quicker, smoother, quieter. Much different, much better. And it holds speed on the highways better, you know? I don't know if you know, but the Prado mapping, if you like, the tuning or the mapping is different to the Hilux. Basically the same engine, almost about the same power. But I can tell you from our 2011 Hilux, which had the, uh, it had the five-speed manual, which is a preferred option over the four-speed auto. So there's a lot of information in this video. The five-speed manual is the preferred option. You can select your gear, you get into it. It's gonna maintain speed up the hills really well. But I've gotta tell you, it hasn't got the torque that the Prados have got, right? On paper, I think, from, going from memory. The, it was about 350 newton meters on the Hilux, 356 or 363, somewhere around the 360 mark, right? The 1KDs in the 120s, 410 newton meters in Australia, okay? And the torque is there, it's real, okay? Um, so more, more power, 
not much, a kilowatt or something like that, but you can feel it a little bit. They just get going better. I think the five-speed auto in the Hilux is probably the pick of the bunch, which started, I think, sometime later, 2013. But you're going to pay for it. You're going to pay a lot more because people know that. I think they're the newer vehicles. Like I say, the last of the best. You know, the five-speed auto with a 1KD in it, last of the best, expensive vehicles. Because people know they've got a good vehicle, they're going to keep it. And if they're going to sell it, they know people are going to fight for it. So I hope that helps. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, Prado, smooth, quiet, responsive, hold speed better. Okay, so a lot of people, they buy a ute, they go, oh, it's handy now to throw stuff in the back. That's good. So if you're on the farm and you, you've got a ute or you want a ute, of course it's handy to do that. And if you go fishing and you want to throw fish, you know, you're fishing off Jetty's land base, you want to throw fish and dirty gear in the back of the ute that you can hose out later, then that's a great idea. Of course, if you're a trader, you're throwing tools and timber and that sort of thing, no problem. But remember, you've got no security unless you've got a canopy or lock boxes, that sort of thing, right? So that's something to think about. Often you can fit just as much stuff, not always, often you can fit just as much stuff in the back of a Prado and it's already got that canopy, you don't have to go buy a canopy, you've got security, it's all sealed up. Oh, big kangaroo on the right, you see him? He was headed our way. <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw that in the video, but um, he came across the highway on the other side and uh, he, was hop he was hopping up the middle, he was about to come over the fence and say g'day to us and uh, yeah, we got past his head and concentrated on what I'm uh, talking to you about, not too much in the rearview mirror. So it was just a video to help you sort of decide whether you should change vehicles. So if you're gonna go from a Prado to a Hilux, prepare for a rougher ride. So I suggest you go, buy, uh, go and drive them and feel them so you know what it's gonna be like because long term, be quite honest if I was driving the highlights up I need some Prado love now I love all the vehicles don't get me wrong but I'm just trying to point out you know and there's people that you know if you've got the 1kz we love the 1kz mode I don't care if it's in the Prado or highlights or whatever but it is more agricultural and gutless compared to the 1kd the 1kd is a much better quieter smoother engine that delivers better power and torque more efficiency much cleaner Right, 1KZ's old news. Good engine still, still love it, but it's old news. Now, some people are saying the 1GD, you know, and the 1KD is old news. Well, 1KD is not old news yet. Um, as engines and vehicles get newer, the changes from one engine to the next aren't as significant, significant and they're not as much improved and refined. You know what I mean? When something gets to a level of quality and it's there, it doesn't get much it doesn't get much better than this type thing, if you know what I mean. I hope that helps trying to explain what I mean, you know, like the 1GD, it is very smooth and quiet, it's got hydraulic lifters, this sort of thing. It's, it revs a bit more freely for these sorts of reasons, a few different things. You know, I'm not a fan of the 1GD, you know that. It's, it just feels a bit gut, it feels not a bit, it feels quite a bit gutless. In a nice light GX, no tow bar, no towing, it feels gutless even when it's not heavy. People say it feels like the handbrake's on, you know. Don't get me wrong, you floor it, it revs and it goes, but you know, it just hasn't got that responsiveness and torque that 1KD's got. I'm not trying to sell you the engine, it's about the vehicle, isn't it? So, what else can I say difference between Prado and Hilux? So it's really the longer turning circle, parking's a pain, you've got a rougher ride, and it seems a bit sluggish, not as much power or torque. I much prefer the Prado, to be quite honest, but Hilux have got their uses, um, and it's a personal choice. I just want to put it out there that if you've got a back problem, some, things like that, and you've got a Hilux, and you're like, oh, move to a Prado, you're going to love it. I'm telling you, everybody loves their Prados. Pretty sure everyone's happy with their Also, engine noise. The Hiluxes are a lot noisier, even with injectors done. At certain load and rev conditions, around that 2,000 revs, give or take, you get some pretty rattles out of them. They haven't got that insulating cover on the top of the engine like the Prado luxury vehicle has, right? That obviously quietens down a lot, and we get to see that first hand by not just working on and doing road tests. You need to own the vehicles and do long drives, all sorts of different driving. The only way to do it is to own it and use them for commuting. So anyway, guys, this is our Hilux. Another video going to our Hilux. Just wanted to help you understand a bit about what the differences are. And I've probably forgotten something. Uh, Hilux is a little bit easier to work on. 
under the bonnet, you know what I mean? They're a little bit, what are they, they're sort of a little bit higher or forward or something. They're just a bit easier to work on. A few things a bit different design, but yeah, like I said, they can be quite rattly even after the injectors are done where the 150 Prados are very quiet. You know, the 120s, they can vary a lot as to how noisy they are. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully that's been a help to help you understand some of the difference between Prado and Hilux. Uh, that's about the best I can do at the moment couple of distractions on the side there subscribe turn the bell on 